Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer, the channel where we cut through the marketing BS, take a look at new and old gaming technologies, figure out what makes the most sense for you. And my good friend Celso over at Cortex just dropped the bomb on the RX 6700 XT. Apparently this is coming out much sooner than we were all anticipating in just a few weeks, the middle of March. So. It's about, what, about three weeks from now, four weeks from now? That's uh, that's a lot quicker than first half of 2021 that Lisa Sue said, so we just assumed that was gonna be like the end of June. So also, also goes over power consumption, performance targets, and basically where these are gonna line up compared to Nvidia's graphics cards. So, all right, so let's jump right into it. So this is the main slide that's also used in his video. So you can see here that there are two 6700 XT variants, and that was pretty strange. You should definitely watch his video and get the full explanation, but the short, short version is it looks like AMD wants to put out a lower power consumption model, like basically a weaker model of the 6700 XT that they can sell at a lower price point and have like the nice MSRP for the card and then have the higher performance model be the one that's maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars more expensive and the one that they really want to sell. Now, whether or not that's going to be the case, I doubt it, especially if this is true. I don't think AMD is going to get a very good uh, reception to this idea. They should have different names for different performance tiers, considering the 189-ish watt model will probably be somewhere around a 3060 Ti. Meanwhile, the 230 watt model will likely be closer to something like an RTX 3070. Celso believes that 25-ish percent uh, faster than the 5700 XT would be the 230 watt model, but with AMD's claims of a 50% performance per watt over RDNA 1, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Either AMD lied to us, which is possible, or the plus 25% would actually be for the lower uh, power consumption model, so the 190 watt model, because the 5700 XT was like 225, 230 watt TDP, so we would be expecting closer to 50% or up to 50% performance uplift at the same power consumption. Now, I've always assumed that the high-end Navi 22 was going to be a 3070 competitor. So at 220, 230 watt TDP, that should be pretty close. If you're looking at about 30-ish percent, 35% faster than a 5700 XT, maybe up to 40% at similar power consumption, that does make a lot of sense to me. Now, Celso also brought us news about the 6700 non-XT, which realistically, that should be the 190 watt model, and then they should have a 6600 XT. That's just my thought. AMD, if you're watching this, that'd be the smarter way to go if you're planning on doing this. But anyway, that's supposed to launch in April, which is still much sooner than we were anticipating, and more than likely, that's probably gonna be close to an RTX 3060 competitor. The big difference here is we have 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the 6700 XTs, as they're, they're labeled there, and then that would mean the RTX 3060 competitor would only have six gigabytes of VRAM. I personally don't think that that would be enough. In my opinion, they're gonna need to match them on VRAM to really make that work. Perhaps they're gonna sell it for a much lower price point, $280, a sub $300 price point. Then at that point, it might make some sense, but realistically, for anybody out there who wants a graphics card here today, six gigabytes for like a 300-ish dollar graphics card, if not more, because they're gonna cost more, because they're gonna sell out. But even with the fake MSRPs that we're seeing, if they come out with a graphics card with six gigabytes of VRAM, it really can't be $300 plus at this point in time. $250, I'd say, might be okay, but that's what we got back in 2016 from NVIDIA, and AMD offered eight gigabyte cards at that point. So in my opinion, these cards really all need to be 12 gigabytes to make a whole lot of sense, especially since NVIDIA did come out with a 12 gigabyte 3060. Begrudgingly, we know they didn't want to do that. They much rather gave us six gigabytes on that card, but they are offering the 12 gigabytes. So I do believe AMD needs to match on that front.
All right, so that's just analyzing the data, but how likely is this to be true? Well, Celso feels very confident. Like, he he was talking about this as if it was definitive. Like, he heard it directly from the horse's mouth. So, I trust his judgment, but we, you know, could be wrong here. This is still a leak. This is still a rumor. The cards do line up in performance and, and power consumption, kind of where I figured that they would be. The launch, according to him, is much sooner than I was anticipating, but better. So I'm being hopeful on that. I would rather they come out next month instead of like three or four or five months from now. So I'm just going to hope that that is correct. And really when it comes down to pricing and stuff like that, we know that nothing's going to be at MSRP, but I would expect if the 6700 XT, the higher wattage model, the faster model, if it performs about on par with a 3070, I would assume we're probably going to see like what? for 79 maybe like a $20 MSRP discount. And then if you have a card that's basically a 3060 Ti, it's going to be around 400 bucks. And then if you have something that's like a 3060, it's going to be around 320 to $350, I would assume. Now, once again, the VRAM difference on the 3060-ish competitor, uh, that's that kind of changes things a bit. So I, I'm not sure where that one's going to land. But overall, these numbers look correct. Ever since uh, RDNA 2 came out, I, I pretty much figured out that that's kind of where things would land. So I think the performance and the power consumptions are right. We just have to wait and see what the, the price is going to be like and when these actually come out. Personally, I'd be very happy to have these come out now. I actually thought that the Navi 22 chips were going to actually start in laptops this time around because these are going to be better for mobile than the NVIDIA counterparts. They should be able to clock down or uh, draw less power while delivering higher performance. But it sounds like Navi 23 is really going to be the chip that AMD is really pushing in mobile. That's going to be their super efficient uh, GPU for that, like your 75, 80 watt GPUs on down. So maybe they're going to start there with that one and help out the desktop market with the Navi 22 chips. Uh, these chips should also be much, much smaller than the 6800 series. So maybe supply will be a little bit better this time. So we just have to wait and see. Me personally, I'm excited. I'm. It's making March a lot more interesting than it originally was. All we really had was Rocket Lake. And let's be honest, guys, I don't think too many of you guys are that interested in Rocket Lake CPUs. But alrighty, guys, I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Is this interesting to you? Are you guys excited about this? Are you like, nah, I'm just going to get a 3060 if I can. If I can't, maybe I'll get one of these. I want to know where you guys are at with this. Uh, also, would a 6 gigabyte competitor compared to NVIDIA's 12 gigabyte 3060, does that even make sense to you? I mean, at all? It doesn't to me, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that one. And then if you are interested in Rocket Lake, I'm throwing a curveball at you guys. If you're interested in Rocket Lake, let me know down in the comment section below because uh, I don't think too many people are, but I could be wrong. Maybe you are. Let me know. And to wrap up, if you guys like videos like this, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. Sharing on social media is pretty much the best way that you could support the channel if you don't want to support directly. So I want to thank you all for that support. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.